been quite the talk of the town, especially considering uh, kind of the context of what he did. He musically, genre wise, from what I hear, is that he kind of like just broke all the rules, just did what he wanted. And it's very much in Uzi's kind of like wheelhouse. It's what he's always done kind of in his career. He's one of those rare artists that always just does whatever he wants to do musically, stylistically, aesthetically, like whatever. And it just always seems to work out for him. Like, I'm not really sure why or how it kind of got to that point, but it is what it is. And he also puts out music when he wants to put out, like you might not hear from him for a while. And then all of a sudden he, he drops you, he hits you with a 26 song album like this, like, or you might not hear from him from years. And then he hits you with a massive song, song of the year. Um, like he did with the just want to rock like he's an enigma and I'm not surprised to see, you know, hear what I've been hearing about this album, kind of how divisive it is and how like, you know, out there and wild and like experimental he gets with stuff and, you know, the covers that he does. So like, I'm just, I don't know, like he's one of those artists that I've never really fully understood his appeal or like how big he is or how big he got. But over the years, it's been hard to deny his, you know, talent and ability and appeal in terms of like music, because he always has like these big hit songs and singles and sounds that kind of shift the way hip hop is going. And he is clearly inspired like a lot of these newer, younger artists that have come up since him. So no matter what, whatever he's doing has been working. So I'm down to check it out. Like I'm not the biggest Uzi fan, but I am a fan. So. I'm down to see uh, where he goes with this album called Pink Tape. And I think, didn't Nicki Minaj have an album called Pink Tape? It was like the pink print after the blueprint. I don't remember. It was something very similar. But uh, yeah, so without further ado, let's just get right into it. Track number one, Flooded the Face. That was tough. That was tough. Beat was tough. Um, very much like in line with kind of some of his previous songs and music and sounds. Like it's an Uzi song, but that was tough. That was a tough little intro. Um, let's go to track number two. Uh Blue Side Doors. Yo, <laughs> hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. <laughs> Yo, Boozy is definitely the gift that keeps on giving. Like, him being on Vlad TV might have been the greatest thing that has ever come out in hip hop media in quite some time. Like, you never know what he's going to say. Everything he says pretty much goes viral. Like, he is a meme machine. <laughs> and the clips just keep coming with him. Like, Come on, man. I mean, tough, tough. Beat was tough. Uh, 808s was absolutely massive. Uh, it's very much in line with kind of, again, that Uzi sound. He uh, kind of mixes that kind of rock star type feel with this, I guess, mumble rap, however you want to say it. But, you know, big energy, huge energy track right there. It's tough 808s. Solid song, solid song, nothing crazy, but solid song. Let's go to track number three, A, featuring Travis Scott. Oh, I like that! Uh, definitely one of those more hype tracks. Definitely cause mosh pits. You can see this playing big at like a festival or one of those big massive concerts. Certainly kind of that high energy mosh pit type song that you would expect from Uzi and Travis Scott. I mean, there was no real hook, just ad lips, and it's just meant to kind of bring that primal energy. And I think it would do a pretty good job of that in a live setting. But again, nothing super crazy, but solid once again from Uzi. Let's go to track number four, Crush Him. I mean, it's cool. I mean, honestly, so far the last couple of tracks have been 
fairly similar and that they're all kind of like that high energy hard hitting 808 simple lyric simple chorus like kind of just that turn up type sound i know this is kind of his lane and what he's known for but it was solid it was just uh another uzi song like honestly like i haven't heard anything that's like too crazy or far outside of his wheelhouse like i was kind of expecting but let's continue let's go to track number five amped I mean, I'm not gonna lie, that song was definitely kind of outside of the cliched kind of high energy turn up energy that it brings, which he's done now for the last five tracks. It sounds very samey as everything I've been getting and actually pretty safe. Like we get kind of, I thought we were gonna get something a little bit different when we started hearing some little bit less guitarist going on, but quite honestly, he played it pretty safe on that. Like. If you're gonna put guitars now at least go all out with it like i know you want to be a rock star just go full on like go full board turn that into a straight up electric guitar song like but very minimal at the at the least you can almost barely hear in the mix of things and it was just kind of like an accent to what was going on and he just repeat them going amped over and over again i don't know i guess i'm outside of that uh fan base possibly that like loves that type of song like it's cool every now and then to get a song like that but like so far it's been every song like that very minimum kind of song structure or creation at all and just ad-libbing and i don't know it starts to wearing you a bit and five songs deep kind of the same let's go to track number six um x2 out time got a little switch up actually got full verses after five songs of basic ad libs getting a bit tiring but this one slaps uh, this one slaps i'm not gonna lie production was tough i like the kind of crazy sense going on if everything and i like that he actually gave us verses like he's not like the best lyrical rapper but he has a, he has a dope flow like he has a dope flow that that sounds interesting on songs and like when he actually like kind of pushes and stretches himself a little bit like he did here give me something a little more to listen to a little more interesting than just yeah 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 i'm amped up like so so i'm glad he kind of gave us a little switch up there because it was getting a bit tiring just hearing ad lips but uh let's go to track number seven died and came back Solid. A solid number like i said whenever he kind of gives us actual verses like it just makes things sound so much more interesting and i can like got at least vibe with it throughout the throughout the track instead of just getting the same repetitive ad libs over and over again but this is dope this is a solid song um nothing crazy again like this is all sounds like what i would expect from uzi um kind of waiting to hear something that i'm not expecting like people have been saying but so far it's solid like it's it's what you expect from uzi Let's go to the next track, spin again. No, 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 that was not working for me. I'm not feeling that one at all. I'm a hard pass on that. Let's go to the next track, that fire. I'm not gonna lie, this one is also kind of like production is okay, it's solid uh for what it's trying to do, but again, after you've heard like six, seven previous songs, all these drum patterns and drum like actual drums are sounding the same. Like not really switching things up, like no, oh, you've had like five other songs that sounded very similar to this. All his drum patterns are the same so far, and it's getting kind of repetitive. I'm not gonna lie. Like, that's fine. The song fine on its own. Nothing crazy, but what you hear in the context of the album, which so far it's not really sound like an album, but um Yeah, that wasn't doing it for me. Again, not doing it for me. Let's go to um I gotta.
I mean, I've said it before, and I don't know if I'm the minority here, but I like when he actually raps in complete senses and thoughts and phrases and gives us actual verses instead of these little bite-sized little ad-libs and phrases. And he gives us a little bit more traditional hip hop production like we got here. It just sounds so much more interesting, so much more complete, so much more like buried, especially on the backdrop of all these kind of like same sounding drum production, drum patterns that we've been getting with all these kind of like turn up anthem type songs. Like this is the Uzi that I like way more than more of his hype, hype uh, turn up type tracks and songs that we've gotten so far. Like this one, I'm digging this and it came at the perfect time because I certainly needed a break from the repetitiveness that we were getting before. But uh, let's go to Endless Fashion featuring Nicki Minaj. It was solid. Not crazy, but it's solid. Uzi and Nicki Minaj have a pretty good, uh, you know, chemistry. They've always had it throughout the, uh, their careers, uh, especially Uzi's. It was cool. Um, another song that Nicki's been on recently that is a direct sample of a once big hit. Like, I get it. That's kind of the trend now to just repurpose old songs, pop songs, particularly that were like smashes. But, hmm. I kind of like the original more. I'm not gonna lie. It was Eiffel 65 Blue Dabba D, if you don't know what I'm talking about. You should have to go check that out. Like, it's an it's not even an interesting flip. It's a flip. Like, there's a reason why it kind of sounds, I don't know, compelling. And that's probably because the song itself was already compelling when it first began with. Like, eh, didn't really need this remix, but it was okay. track number 12 this one the last one we're gonna do we're gonna take a quick break right after this okay a little chief keith in there if y'all not familiar hate being sober from chief Keith's debut album which was an absolute smash smash honestly it just makes me want to listen to that song instead of this one but it's cool to see him kind of paying homage Perfect time in to take that break, but um, it was all right. It was solid. Nothing crazy. Um, again, very much expected from Uzi at this point. Like, I don't know. I don't like. I'm not digging this album so far. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, there's some moments and some bright spots, but overall, it's kind of sounding a bit repetitive and safe. And hmm, needs to switch things up. Hopefully, uh, in the second half, we get a little bit something different, but. Right now, not loving it. Track number 13, all alone, let's go. Uh, my fault, green three, five, five, four. No, I have not um, heard Utopia yet. That is actually next on the list that we'll be doing later this week. Uh, catching up on some streams that we missed, but no, nah, I haven't heard it. Do you, uh, what do you think about it so far? How do you compare it to Uzi? I like that one. I like that one. But like I said, it was definitely more of the um, complete song, like complete verses, actually I'm rapping, actually putting songs together, actually like structuring things. Like there's a reason why the structure and music, like I understand sometimes you can just throw it out the window, but when it's done over and over again, it kind of gets grating. But I like when he gives us the more structured sound and this was dope. This is solid. Let's go to the next track, Nakamura. <laughs> that was dope. Again, I like that one too. Certainly high energy, big. It felt, it felt big. It felt massive. It definitely felt anthemic. Sounds like a song that will go crazy in an arena or a festival and he certainly brings energy with that one. And uh, yeah, while it wasn't like, again, the most diverse from what we've heard before, I think the added kind of, I don't know, there are little touches here that definitely separated it from his more turn up songs. And this one felt bigger than just, you know, less turn up. Like it definitely felt 
aimed for like arenas and whatnot, but it was dope. Let's go to, um, this one to rock. I don't even think I need to introduce this song at this point. That is hands down the biggest song of the last year and continue to be one of the biggest songs of this year. Like you've heard it everywhere. You see it in TikToks. You see it on social media. Everybody's doing the dance. Like he really created a wave with this one. And, uh, I don't really think I need to introduce it. Let's just get right to it. Just want to rock. I mean, like I said, what can you say at this point? Easily one of the biggest songs of the year, last year and this year for good reason. That shit is just straight hype, man. When you hear it come on, it's very hard not to get into that groove. That, that beat is ridiculous. Very kind of dancey, high energy. And I think the shortness kind of plays into it, into why it's so catchy. Like you always, it leaves you always wanting more from it. And then it just ends. Um, if there's any song that should have been longer, I think this is one of them. I'm surprised we didn't get like an extended version on the album, at least while some other songs got like three or four minutes, which is kind of like, eh, why those, why not this one? But either way, certified smash certified hit, <laughs> it honestly might be as big a song to date, which is kind of crazy. And, uh, yeah, doesn't need any introduction, any more explaining to do. It is fire for a reason. Let's go to the next track. Fire alarm. I know the sample for sure. I'm trying to think of it. It's, um, it's an electronic group. I want to say that sample. Hold on. Let me hear this again. Oh, that is justice. Absolutely sampling justice. Um, I forget the name of the song, but it's gotta be justice. Sounds just sounds gotta gotta be justice. Sounds just like justice. We're fired, by the way. Oh we that was tough. That flip was tough. I'm not gonna lie, that beat was pretty tough. Um I'm not a huge fan of all these kind of reinterpretations, I would say, almost damn near covers of songs. But this flip was actually dope and tough and like high energy like i'm digging that one even though i definitely think the original still slaps way harder which is justice i forget the name of the song but you can definitely go check that out this one was dope fire alarm was dope um yeah it was easy to sing this is cool let's uh let's go to the next track cs chop soey so this is the cover they were already talking about uh all over the internet. I actually never heard it till now. So I'm interested to see how this goes and how this sounds. Um, the Uzi Vert cover and Chop Suey, not something I would have had on my bingo card for 2023, but here we are. So unexpected, like not expected at all from him. Like I didn't even know he listened to this one down, but um, could be worse. Could definitely be worse. He could have done a lot worse job in covering that song. It is such a massively recognizable, iconic song. And to choose to cover that pretty much out of nowhere. Bold choice, certainly a bold choice. And I would say it worked out for the most part. Like you can do much worse in covers. And um, while I wouldn't choose to listen to this one over the original, I think he did a fairly decent job. And the fact that he is covering this is going to introduce so many other like younger generation fans and artists to this other dope music that they probably weren't aware of. It's also a dope thing. So like all these kind of old heads out here, rock and rap on both sides, kind of like bitching and complaining about him covering it is like, who gives a F like covers are part of music and have been for so long. Like it's just a natural part of music. It's less so uh, a part of like the hip hop culture, but I, you can definitely see it becoming more and more of a thing, but it is dope. Like I thought it was dope, like not better than the original, but a solid cover. Nonetheless, I'm with it. Let's, um, let's go to the next one. Werewolf. I think this is what his second song will bring me the horizon. Who's 
probably one of the biggest mainstream bands out there these days like they're pretty fucking massive and um to see them kind of hopping on a song together was not what i expected but here we are once again with werewolf so let's check it out I mean, that chorus is fucking ridiculous, like magic. Um, and Luzi is surprisingly dope on this song. Like I really didn't know how, what to expect out of this mismatching of sounds and especially with his kind of style of rap and song making and with Bring Me or the Horizons kind of metal, loud in your face approach, like it's working surprisingly well so far. Again, very unexpected, very unexpected, but absolutely fire. Like I didn't really know how Uzi was going to sound alongside Bring Me Horizon, but he really did his thing and Bring Me Horizon obviously did their thing. Honestly, if anything, it sounds more like a Bring Me Horizon song featuring Uzi than Uzi featuring Bring Me the Horizon, but I'm not really complaining either way. Sounded super dope. I wish we got more of these kind of crossover collaborations between rock and metal and like hip hop, because I do think there's like overlaps. It's you used to hear a lot more in like late 90s or 2000s. Come on, that Jay-Z Linkin Park album. Absolutely magic. I still listen to it to this day, and I would love to see that kind of era of sound come back, especially considering at this day and age, everybody li grows up listening to pretty much everything. So like, bring it back. Dope. Dope from Uzi. Very surprising, but very dope. I'm liking the second half of this so much more than the first half right now. Let's see if he keeps it going. Let's go to the next track, Pluto Mars. Pluto to Mars. Oh, it was a vibe. Very wavy, very boppy, like enjoyable little number. Honestly, it kind of sounds like early Uzi in production and song rise, but there's a reason why people like it so much. It's certainly a vibe get this playing you know at a pool party or something and vibe right along it was cool um definitely picked up a lot more from the first half i'm not gonna lie like i'm liking what i'm hearing so far let's go to the next track let's go to patience featuring don toliver who is absolutely everywhere oh i like that okay Nice little smooth, sultry number from not expecting that once again, like kind of slow things down a bit, less turn up, more uh, romantic and lovey dovey, I guess, in kind of the modern sense of like what R&B these days. But it was cool though, number definitely vibey. Um, Don Toddler fit perfectly on the song and I'm feeling it like it's kind of crazy how much better the second half is than the first. But let's keep it going. A couple more tracks. Uh, days come and go. Fire. That song was fire. Super vibey. Move a little groove to it. Like I said, I love the tracks where he's giving you actual songs, like not just ad libbing, just throwaway type material. Like he's actually giving you verses, song structure, kind of a theme and purpose to what he's saying. Musically, like he can be very dope. And this is him being very dope. Like this shit was dope. Definitely a vibe. Um, Last two tracks. Let's go to next one. Rehab. <laughs> Dope song. Um, super. Definitely a vibe and probably the realest I've ever heard him be on a song. Quite honestly, um, speaking about obviously uh, recent stint in rehab that he basically saved his life and changed him around, hopefully for the better. Um, it's dope to see artists, especially the young artists, kind of like opening up about those experiences and like speaking about getting help because this is a very drug addicted kind of culture and community, especially fans these days and the artists kind of they emulate. So to see them kind of like 
be able to reach this point instead of like, you know, the worst thing possible happening, which we've seen too much over the recent years and see him kind of speak about in this open, honest way. And then like this positive kind of manner and like speaking about it as like a good experience instead of like something that he was that he didn't necessarily want or need, but he's speaking about bluntly and it was dope. Like it's really rare to see from somebody kind of like at that age and like in this generation of artists that want to be all rock stars. And it's like not all pretty. And honestly, the real stuff I've ever heard him be on a song and it's dope. It was definitely a vibe. All right. Last track we're going to do finally long ass album. Um, the end featuring baby metal. Again, very unexpected, weird kind of collaboration out of left field. They are that kind of Japanese, I think all girls, uh, metal band and to see him kind of like, you know, team up with them is a little bit wild, but let's check it out. Not what I was expecting, but, uh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, I don't really know what to expect this because I'm not familiar with Meta Baby Meta at all outside of like just kind of name recognition and general aesthetic appeal. But um, that was not what I was expecting. That was absolutely bad shit fucking crazy, quite honestly. And um, I wasn't sure if I was liking it at first, but somehow it grew on me. And by the end, I was kind of fully vibing with it. Like that breakdown was pretty fucking tough. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> I mean, opening up, it definitely sounded like a intro to any kind of anime uh, series. If you are an anime watcher, it definitely sounded like it could fit easily as like a one piece opener, especially kind of like the earlier parts of the song. And uh, I'm not going to lie. Some animal, some anime songs certainly slap. Um, I'm. It's probably kind of their appeal. Baby metal as a group anyways, is kind of mixing that type of sound and appeal. But uh, seeing as Uzi is a big anime kind of Japanese culture fan himself, it's dope to see him kind of bring that to fruition for him. But uh, yeah, like I said, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I wasn't sure if I was actually vibing with this or feeling with it. By, but by the end, they kind of fully turned to me and that shit kind of slaps. I definitely want to hear that breakdown again. And uh, yeah, one of the most unexpected collaborations of this year, hands down. But somehow it worked. Huh. But all right, that's it for um, Lil Uzi vs. Pink Tape. It was a long ass album. Uh, my general thoughts and feeling is that there's like two versions of this album. The first half, which is very mid and actually kind of sucks. Then the second half, which is fire. Like. It's almost like, I don't know, man, like if he would have just erased ex with a few exceptions from the first half majority of those songs, this album would have hit so much harder to me because the first half had me damn near snoozing by the midway point. Everything sounded the same. Everything was very safe and generic and just kind of just lazy, quite honestly. Um, then the second half came and like a just switched immediately and uh what we were getting before what we're getting at the end don't even sound like they belong in the same album quite honestly and it was just like very strange to kind of see that direction it was just too long like 23 songs and that's not including the three bonus tracks that we are not getting to it's just too fucking long and a lot of those song structures and styles don't need to be three minutes plus like they can be two minutes because they're not doing that much creatively and repetitively. Would you hit a certain point? It kind of loses its appeal, which is how it felt to me. So I'm very conflicted because the first half fucking sucked. I'm going to be honest, outside of a few tracks here and there, I was not feeling that first half and I was damn near about ready to tap out the second half. That shit was kind of fire. It actually felt like he was an actual artist in the second half of the album. Like he was trying things. He was doing things like he was actually piecing together actual songs instead of like some type of TikTok meme rap shit. 
so I'm conflicted. Second half was fire, first half was absolutely trash. But we're gonna split the difference and say it was a solid album. One that I don't know if I will find myself going back to very much, quite honestly. But there are certainly some few songs that will stick out to me, probably even till the end of this year. So I don't really know. You guys let me know what you think about this tape. Where is this kind of rank? Among Us discography was a worth the wait. Was this what you were expecting? What were some of your favorite songs? Let us know in the comments down below wherever this you are, wherever you are watching or listening to this. And uh, yeah, wild fucking ride. But uh, we made it.